Good afternoon. Um, today we'll be going going over the Feast of Tabernacles, which is um, basically a part two to the Day of Atonement study. And this this feast comes after the Day of Atonement <clears throat> because the children of Israel have had their sins um, blotted out and forgiven by the Lord. So before we start, shall we have a word of prayer? Amen. All right, now I'd like to do a little recap upon the Day of Atonement. And um, I'm just going to bring a few points from it and read a text and about two quotes shown it. And first, I'm going to read from Leviticus chapter 23, verse 29. Leviticus 23, 29 says, For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, on that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So, in this verse, it's stating that if you do not partake in the Day of Atonement, your soul shall be cut off. So, you, you will receive a judgment for not partaking in, in the Day of Atonement. So, I'm reading a quote from Sister White from... Review and Herald, July 7th, 1896, paragraph 2. Review and Herald, July 7th, 1896, paragraph 2, when it says, This feast was preceded by a day of atonement. And the feast she's speaking about here is the Feast of Tabernacles. She says, This feast was preceded by a day of atonement, which occurred on the 10th day of the 7th month, when everyone was to afflict his soul by confessing his sin, both both." to the Lord and to his brethren. This humiliation was to prepare the way for the, for the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, which lasted seven days and was, a, and, and was, a, and was a memorial of, of the protecting care of God when he had led Israel through the wilderness. So we know upon the Day of Atonement, there are three things three primary pri primarily three primary things that um the lord's people had to do and we know that the day of atonement is placed at midnight because that is when the most holy place is open under the third step so it is you have the one two and three <clears throat> excuse me the three things are it's prayer fasting and humiliation of heart and humiliation of heart is also confessing of sin as well that's afflicting your soul upon the day of atonement and these were the three things that must be done the prayer fasting and then and then you humble yourselves confess your sins and after, after these steps are taken, after this, this day is passed, and then you go into the Feast of Tabernacles where, where the children of Israel celebrated because the Lord had forgiven, forgiven their sins. So now I'll be reading from Patriots and Prophets 540, paragraph 3. Patriots and Prophets 540, paragraph 3, and it says, This feast was to be pre Excuse me. This feast was to be preeminently an occasion of rejoicing. So this feast, Feast of Tabernacles, was a was an occasion of rejoicing. It's the rejoicing because their sins have been um, blotted out. It says, continuing on, it says, it occurred just after the Great Day of Atonement, when the assurance had been given that their iniquity should be remembered no more. At peace with God, they. They now came before him to acknowledge his goodness and to praise him for his, mer for his mercy. The labors of the harvest being ended and the toils of the new year not yet begun, the people were free from care and could give themselves up to sacred 
joyous influences of the hour. So, Sis White clearly states that the reason why they were, they can give themselves up to the sacred joyous influences is because they, they have received the assurance from the Lord that their iniquity should be remembered no more. And so once they've gone through this, this time period of, once they gone through the Day of Atonement, they can, um, they can give themselves up to joy and rejoice because the Lord had pardoned, pardoned their sins, their sins and this would be FOT is Feast of Tabernacles. Now we're gonna go into um we're gonna go into just reading what the Bible states about the Feast of Tabernacles. And we'll be reading from Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34. That's where we will start. Leviticus 23, verse 34, and it says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. So this is one thing I want to point out, is that after the Day of Atonement, the Feast, the last service is Feast of Tabernacles, and then this lasts for seven days days start over it says speak unto the children of Israel saying the 15th day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord on the first day shall be an holy convocation shall do no servile work therein seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord on the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you and ye shall Offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 39. It says, Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land. So the fruit is gathered at the cross after the day of atonement. And the fruit is gathered because and they also rejoice that the harvest is ended because the tares have been harvested or bound off at midnight and then these are yeah, the tares are bounded at midnight and then the wheat are gathered at the cross and the harvest ended Verse 39 says, also, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye, ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles is a Sabbath. And onward, and the last day of the day of, the, of the, excuse me, of the Feast of Tabernacles is also a Sabbath. So something else, something else I want to add into there is that on the Day of Atonement, the Lord says that the children of Israel must treat the Day of, Day of Atonement as a Sabbath as well. So you can have, so there's also Sabbath at midnight, at the cross, and at midnight cry. So this whole time period is the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is from midnight to midnight cry for the priests. So now verse 40, it says, And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. So yet again, we keep seeing continually over and over that this is a time period of rejoicing rejoicing slash joy verse 42 skipping over 41 now going to 42 it says you shall dwell in booths seven days all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths so also this the feast they're supposed to dwell in booths 
and we're going to see what that means later on. Let's put dwell and boofs. So now we're going to see what it teaches and why, why, did, why did it happen in the first place. And we know some already, some, some reasons why it happened, but we're going to go just a little more in depth with it. Um, we're going to read from Patriots and Prophets, page 542, paragraph 1. Patriots and Prophets 542, paragraph 1, and it says, The people of Israel praised God at the Feast of Tabernacles as they called to mind his mercy in their deliverance from the bondage of Egypt and his tender care for them during their pilgrim life in the wilderness. So during this feast, they bring to mind what the Lord has led them in the past and what the Lord and it brings them to mind their sojourn in the wilderness. And we know the wilderness for the priests, the 40 days is from 9-11 to midnight and then they enter in into the promised land. And this 40 days um, is the wilderness. So the light that will come at midnight at, at the cross, excuse me, will not contradict the light which came at 9-11. Because whatever light that comes here for the wise priests will bring their minds back to, to the light that the Lord gave them at 9-11 so so it would so in a way they're looking back at their old paths in in one line of thought they're looking back at their old paths and they're seeing how the Lord has led them and now and now they see the light light from 9-11 is is the same light at midnight but just more light added onto it it's just building on top of it Continuing on, it says, They rejoice also in the consciousness of pardon and acceptance through the service of the Day of Atonement just ended. So, it says that they, 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 rejoice, they rejoice here because of the service here, because their sins are forgiven, pardon and acceptance. But when, but, but, but when, when the ransom of the Lord shall, shall have been safely gathered, Excuse me. But when the ransom of the Lord have been safely gathered into the heavenly Canaan, forever delivered from the bondage of the curse under which the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, they will they will rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Christ's great work of atonement for men will then have been completed and their sins will have been forever blotted out. So their sins of the wise are forever blotted out here and they give themselves up to joy now I'm continuing on read from Patriots and Prophets page 540 paragraph 2 Patriots and Prophets 540 paragraph 2 and it says in the seventh month came the Feast of Tabernacles or of Ingathering so this feast is also called the Feast of Ingathering this feast acknowledged God's bounty in the products of the orchard, the olive, olive grove, and the vineyard. It was the crowning festival, festival gathering of the year. This is the last festival, the last, last gathering of the whole year. So in this, this is the crowning. Um, just move this over. So here is the crowning and in other places sister white says no cross no crown so this is the time period of the cross for the um for the wise priests because they'll be going through great great persecution temptation and it's a great time of trouble it's, it's, it's a time of trouble for them and once they get go go through this time of trouble this is their cross experience and then this is where they receive their crown. No cross, no crown. So in the crowning festival gathering of the year, this is when they give themselves up to joy because, because they have um, received pardon and acceptance, so acceptance, acceptance sorry, and have gone, gone through their trial and have been, and now are overcomers. 
Continuing on from PP 540 paragraph 2, it says, The land had yielded its, its increase, the harvest had been gathered into the granaries, the fruits, the oil, and the wine had been stored. The first fruits had been reserved, and now the people came with their tributes of thanksgiving to God, who had thus richly blessed them. Now, I'm going to the next page, page of Prophets 541, paragraph 2. It says, the Feast of Tabernacles was not only commemorative, but typical. It not only pointed back to the wilderness sojourn, it not only pointed back to 9-11, but as the Feast of Harvest. So this is also the Feast of Harvest. Because Feast of Harvest. Because this is where, because this is where the we are bound are brought into the heavenly garner first bound the tears and then the wheat and the harvest is done because now all are gathered continue on it says but as the feast of harvest it celebrated the ingathering of the fruits of the earth and pointed forward to the great day of final ingathering when the lord of the harvest shall send forth his reapers to gather the tears together in bundles for the fire and to gather the wheat into his garner at that time, the wicked will all be destroyed. They will become as though they had not been. And every voice in the whole universe will unite in joyful praise to God, says the revelator. Every, every creature which is in heaven and, and on the earth and under the earth and such, and, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So this feast of um, harvest, feast of final end gathering, is also pointing forward to, to, to the final day of end gathering when, um, when all, all, all of God's people, the wheat, will be gathered into, into the garner, which is the heavenly city. So, this feast, for some, will be destruction, based, based upon what Sister White quoted from Obadiah 16. This feast, for some, is a time of destruction. For some, it's, for, it's, it's rejoicing. For the wise, it's rejoicing. For the wicked, it's destruction. So, now we're going to see how, um, how this is, for some, destruction. Now we're going to read from Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Zechariah 14, verse 1. And then I'll jump down to verse 8 and read onward to verse 19. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. And we already stated from before that the Sabbath is all through, all through the line, all, all through midnight. And you know the Sabbath is the day of the Lord. So whatever Zechariah is speaking of is it is pointing for the priests for midnight for their third step for the priests. And it's right above here, day of the Lord. says behold the day of the lord cometh and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee verse 8 and it shall be in that day the day of the lord that living water shall go out from jerusalem half of them toward the former sea and and half of them toward the hinder sea in summer and in winter shall it be so i'm going to propose from now that the living waters flow from from point b of the cross this is the living waters and the reason why i'm saying that because this is also where the full outpouring comes down and you know the latter is his word and god's word is living and these are the living waters that be pouring out and shall go forth to jerusalem because from this point onward this is jerusalem there are no sinners within god's church all sinners are separated Verse 9, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord in his name. One. <clears throat> Verse 10, 
excuse me, I'm going to jump to verse 11. And it says, And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall, shall be safely in, inhabited. Verse 12, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. So this plague is going to come upon the tares, the foolish, the bad fish, the, the Judas, because they have fought against Jerusalem. They have fought against the wise. It said, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that, in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold everyone on the hand of his neighbor, his, and, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor." And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Verse 15. And so, and so shall the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. So, like we said, prior is that this time period from from the cross on to midnight cry is a time of destruction for the wicked, a time of rejoicing for the wise. And this plague will come upon the wise. And this plague is the plague of the ass, which is Islam. And we know in this, in this judgment will be placed, placed upon the wicked at midnight cry, where Islam attacks. <laughs> Verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left, excuse me, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year, from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Verse 17, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even, on, even upon them shall be no rain. So those who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles will receive no rain. And if there's no rain, then that means it is a famine. And this is when they'll go searching to and fro and they will not find. This is a famine, say drought. They have no food. And this is and the reason why they will be receiving no rain is because they have because they did not partake in in the last service, which is the day of atonement. They did not humble themselves before the Lord so that their sins may be forgiven. So now they they sin is still within them, and the Lord comes to destroy sin and sinners. So this is their this is their lot because they did not partake in the day of atonement verse 18 and if the family of egypt go not up and come not that have no rain there shall be the plague wherewith the lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles this shall be the punishment of egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So whoever does not come up to keep this feast, their punishment is Islam. Their punishment is a plague. Now, I'll be reading from E.J. Wagner from PTUK. 674, paragraph 6 and paragraph 7. I'm going to skip some of it in paragraph 6 because he just um, cites what, what, what we just read in Zechariah chapter 14. So I'll just read probably the first two sentences and it says, Just as every revelation of Christ makes us understand more of the written word, so the understanding of what the Feast of Tabernacles really is explains a text that is much misunderstood and perverted. It is in the last chapter of Zechariah. In the, first, in, in the first part of the chapter, we are told of the coming of the Lord when the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descends from God out of, 
descends from God out of between and, and occupies the place of the present Jerusalem, which is in bondage with her children. The feet of Jesus touching the Mount of Olives divide it, and the city occupies the great plain that is that is thus formed. And then now he goes into um, quoting the verses we just read. So now I'm going to jump down to the next paragraph, paragraph 7. It says, But after the city comes down, the devil will gather all the wicked around it to destroy it. And then fire shall come down from God out of heaven and shall consume them. The saints of God will already have been in the city for a thousand years, keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. So now he just likened the seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles to the saints keeping the thousand years. Where Satan, the, the tear of them all, is bound for a thousand years. So for some, it's destruction and wailing. And for some, it's rejoicing because the wicked will be, the wicked, um, Satan and his angels will be bound to, to the earth where they cannot deceive or tempt anyone else. While the wise will be in the new Jerusalem for these seven days, keeping the true Feast of Tabernacles. The true Feast of Tabernacles is when we are in, in new Jerusalem, reigning as kings and priests with the Lord. It says, the saints of God will already have been in the city for a thousand years, keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. <clears throat> when the wicked come up, come up to the city, but since these wicked ones do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, having long before defiantly and spitefully rejected the Lord, they will be destroyed. In which class shall we be? Now is the time to decide, for now is the day of salvation. All right, so, excuse me. So, so after a thousand years, New Jerusalem comes back down. New Jerusalem comes back down. And, and um, the wicked try to come and take, take, take the city, but now they receive the plague. They get destroyed. So in type, Islam is a type of the destruction that will come upon the wicked after, after the thousand years. So this is really pointing forward to, to the final day of end gathering, just as Sister White says. So the fire that consumes them is Islam, the plague. So now I'm going to bring some parallel lines to show what else will happen in um, our time. under the third angel's message for the priest. So we'll go to John chapter seven, John seven, I'm gonna read verse one and two, then jump down to 10, then I'll go to 14. John chapter seven, it says, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand. So during the feast of tabernacles, the Jews sought to kill Christ. So <clears throat> after, after the wise are gathered and, and the Lord have a perfect people holding a perfect message, this is when, um, this is when the foolish will try to, will seek to um, destroy, destroy the wise. Seek. To kill, because they sought to kill Christ. The Jews sought, sought to kill Christ during the Feast of Tabernacles as well. Verse ten. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. And Amos three seven says that says surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets, his secret unto his servants the prophet. So the Lord comes up to the Feast of Tabernacles in secret. And we'll see that this secret will be revealed in secret. 
and then the Lord reveals himself in, in the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles. So in this time period as well for the priests, the Lord, the Lord will give light. The Lord will come down and give a message. And we already have that message defined by the ladder and coming down onto the wise priest. And the wise priest will give a message, give a message to his the Lord will give a message to the wise priest and the wise priest will give a message to the rest of the Lord's people. And we can see that in many of the Mara, Mara, Mara visions where they go through these three steps and then the Lord tells them to go give a message. You can see that in Ezekiel 2, Isaiah 6, and um, Jeremiah 1, also Daniel 10. But we're going to continue on. John chapter 7, verse 14 says now about the midst of the feast jesus went up into the temple and taught and the jews marveled saying how know if this man letters having never learned jesus answered them and said my doctrine is not is not mine but his that sent me in the last day that that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirsts let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So this is when the Lord gives the message of the living waters. And it also it can you can also see it. It says in the in the last day of the feast, but you can also see it in the beginning. So you, you, in both times, the Lord's people will be giving giving a loud cry they will cry out and give a strong message so that so that the levites may come on to so that the levites and the land workers may come onto the true church because it says saying if any man thirst let him come onto me and drink and this will be christ saying it through us because the wise priest will be the incarnation divinity and humanity just as christ and this is this is when the secrets are revealed the lord comes out openly and says openly in front of everybody, um, if any man thirsts, let him come on to me and drink. Mm. So this message is going forward. This message that comes at the cross going is a Going forward is a gathering message. And you can also see it here. Even see secrets revealed here as well, based upon what we just read. And it's a gathering message as well. All right. Um, we're going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 10. Deuteronomy 31, verse 10. And this is, this is showing the gathering. The Feast of Tabernacles was a gathering um, festival. Now, in verse 10, it says, And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity, of the year of release in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is to come, is 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 come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do and and observe to do all the words of his law so in verse 12 it's a gathering for all even the strangers so this same message will be given to the land file workers but the lord will add even more light upon it to so that so that the so that the gentiles may come on to the lord also here it says that they may hear that they may learn and Fear the Lord your God. Then the last one says, and observe to do all the words of his law. And this goes back with the three angels' message. And the first angel says, fear God, give glory to him, for the hour judgment, judgment has come. And the fourth 
speaking about worship. And the fourth one in here is speaking about worship as well. And worship him that made the heavens and the earth, so forth. And it says, and observe to do all the words of this law. So speaking of worship, verse 13, and that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. So the ones that had not any time to hear and learn are the Levites and then onward to the landfall workers. So now this is the last um, parallel. The last parallel I'm going to bring in is the crucif uh, excuse me. Yes, the crucifixion of Christ and the striking of Moses. These, these two events are synonymous. These are the same event. So this white pairs these two together and place it under the Feast of Tabernacles. So in Patriots and Prophets, page 411, paragraph 3, and I'll be reading 412, paragraph 1. It says, the smitten rock was a figure of Christ. And through this symbol, the most precious, precious spiritual truths are taught as the, as the life-giving waters flowed from the smitten rock. That's the living waters flowing out from, from, the, from the rock. So, so from Christ, smitten of God. Wounded for, our, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the stream of salvation flows for a lost race. And the stream of salvation, which is the message going forward to, to um, the other classes, is a message of salvation. The stream of salvation flows for a lost race. As, as, as the rock had been once smitten, so Christ was to be once offered to bear the sins of many. Our Savior was not to be sacrificed a second time. And it is only necessary for those who seek for those who seek the, the blessings of his grace to ask, ask in the name of Jesus, pouring forth the heart's desire and in penitential, I think that's the word, prayer. Such prayer will will such prayer will bring bring before the Lord of hosts the wounds of Jesus and then will flow forth afresh the life-giving blood symbolized by the flowing of the living water for Israel. Next paragraph, the flowing of the water from the rock in the desert was celebrated by the Israelites after their establishment in Canaan. So the 40 years then they're in Canaan with demonstration of great rejoicing showing the Feast of Tabernacles. In the time of Christ, this celebration had become a most impressive ceremony. It took place on the occasion of the Feast of Tabernacles, when the people from all the land were assembled at Jerusalem. So, in closing, we see that the Feast of Tabernacles is a service that shows a twofold work, one for the wise and one for the foolish. For the wise, we see that the wise um, rejoice in in. In the Feast of Tabernacles, because during the Day of Atonement, their sins have been have received pardon, and and they have been accepted of the Lord, and and now they can come in this time when the harvest is ended, the fruits the fruits are gathered, the wise are gathered fully, because first the tears, and then and then the wheat, and the harvest um the fruit is gathered, and this is when they give themselves up up to joy and they'll be drinking of living waters. They'll be receiving a message from the Lord, which is a gathering message for the classes to come. But for the wicked, since since the wicked did not take part in this David in, in this service, the Day of Atonement, they will be cut off based upon Leviticus 23, 29. And they they have not kept the Sabbath of, of the Lord. So now so it's showing that there will be in our time, that meant that the foolish will disregard the Sabbath and they would go out and do a wonderful work because the Bible says that the Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, was supposed to be a, was supposed to be a, um, a Sabbath onto them where they rest. And since, since they have not part, partaken in the service of the Day of Atonement, they will, re they, they will, be, they will receive no rain, which is a famine. And since, since they do not receive that, as well, along with, with the famine, they will receive a plague. It's the plague of the horse, the mule, the camel, the ass. And those are all symbols of Islam when, 
when Islam attacks at midnight cry, their, their lot, their portion, their reward in which they will receive is the plague. And <clears throat> while others are receiving a gathering message so that they, they may be with, with the Lord and reigning as kings and priests. So um, I pray that this was clear and this was a blessing onto those who have viewed it. So shall we kneel for a word of prayer? Loving Father in heaven, thank you for your word, for your son, and for the cross, Lord. I pray, that you, or, I pray that you may help us to humble ourselves so that we may receive receive your word. I pray you may forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings and help us to be more like you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.